You know, I have to say I love these kinds of news stories. It not only proves my point, but it also shows you where the industry is unquestionably heading. This is happening even quicker than I thought. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to all the new subscribers. There's been thousands of you. I mean, hey, this is a new channel, so welcome to all of you. Awesome to see you all. You know what? 2022 is going to be amazing. Big shout out, Patreon supporters of the channel. There's been some new ones lately. Thank you very much for jumping on board. I really do appreciate your support. It means a lot. I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon account. If you want to jump on and support the channel in 2022, that would be sensational. So what kind of shenanigans are Hyundai up to lately? When I say shenanigans, I mean, these are good shenanigans. If you can call something shenanigans good, these are good. These are great. Hyundai has made a good decision, a good financial decision to close its engine development division. So there will be no all new engine replacements for petrol and diesel engines used in Hyundai, Kia and Genesis vehicles. In other words, the age of ice is over for Hyundai. Why are they doing this? Well, they've said they are accelerating their EV plans and they've closed their engine development department already. They closed it at, at the end of 2021. Now, obviously the writing's well and truly on the wall for Hyundai who are, I think, I. It is baffling to me that a car company like Hyundai has made these excellent vehicles. I mean, Ionic 5, just sensational car. So much demand. They could literally sell hundreds and maybe a million, maybe two, a couple of million potentially a year, maybe even more. And you know what? People are literally here in Australia and in America, and I know in Europe, literally begging for the Ionic 5. But Hyundai just isn't making that many of them. But I think this is a step in the right direction. The Korean firm shuttered the engine development division of its Nam Yang R&D Center on December 23rd, 2021. The CEO of Hyundai signaled the move was in the works when the company announced a more aggressive EV push in late December 2021, but it wasn't clear at the time when the change would take place. Now, it's interesting, isn't it, that in December, quite a number of automakers said, oh, well, we've changed our plans. We're now going to make more EVs, drastically more, in some cases, double the number. Some cases, they're doubling, tripling the amount of money they're putting into EVs over the next few years. It's great to see. So according to a big newspaper publication in South Korea, Park Chung Kook, recently appointed as the automaker's research and development chief, sent an email to employees explaining the change. Now it is inevitable to convert into electrification, he said. Our own engine development is a great achievement, but we must change the system to create future innovation based on the great asset from the past. I'm not sure what he means by great asset from the past, but anyway, who cares? Good move. It's understood a small group of engineers will continue to work with internal combustion engines on boutique projects, but they're only responsible for updating existing designs rather than developing new petrol and diesel engines. Now, apparently almost all drivetrain employees have been moved into teams designing EV powertrains. Development centers will be converted to work with electric motors and a new battery development center is being established. The reallocation of resources within the R&D department will help the automaker reach its updated EV sales target. The company is now aiming to sell 1.7 million EVs in 2025, which is substantially more than the previous goal of 1 million electric cars in the same year. Now for context, that's about half of Hyundai's current sales. Now, Hyundai's engine development team was established in 1983, but it took until 1991 for the automaker's first in-house designed engines made their actual production debut. Dubbed Alpha, the 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine was first used in the S Coupe in both naturally aspirated and turbocharged forms. The task of replacing the company's Mitsubishi sourced engine designs stepped up a gear when the second generation Elantra, still known as the Elantra in Australia, was launched back in 1995, which was available locally in 1.8 litre guys. Now the great news here is almost all mainstream brands have already admitted they are no longer developing future internal combustion engines. Mercedes, Volkswagen, BMW, even Ford and General Motors have gone down that track as well. However, one interesting outlier here, one company who's still very much focusing on internal combustion engines, and I believe 
could be in huge trouble as a result is Mazda. Mazda have always been outliers, albeit with mixed results. Personally, I'm kind of glad they're still focusing on internal combustion engines because they'll probably go bankrupt pretty quickly. And this would be a good example for textbooks in history in the future to show what not to do when a new better thing comes along. Don't ignore it. Don't just stick your head in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist. You've got to adapt or die. On that note, thanks for watching the channel and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.